so transformation of multiple random variables so here we have considered n random variables x x n where small n is varying from 1 2 3 so on n okay so this random variables this n random variables may be continuous or discrete or mixed random variables it can be of any type continuous discrete or mixed random variables okay now we are defining new random variables another set of random variables the y n where n value is varying from 1 to n n number of new random variables this is defined by applying transformation to the random variables x n how do you obtain y n here y n is obtained by applying transformation to the x n okay so how do you write y n y n is equal to t n of x1 x2 so on xn where small n is varying from 1 to n okay so if you want to find out y1 what you have to do apply transformation 1 y2 can be obtained by applied by obtaining applying transformation t2 okay so the transformation tn what is the type of transformation we are applying the transformation can be linear or non-linear and continuous or discrete okay so tn can be of linear non-linear or continuous or discrete transformation okay now here what we have considered we have considered that yn is obtained by single value continuous function okay the transformation function is of what type it is single value continuous transformation okay and this transformation tn is having continuous partial derivatives what type of uh, transformation it is tn is a single value continuous transformation function and whereas tn is having continuous partial derivatives okay in that case since what is yn yn is transformation of xn yes or no yn is what transformation of xn now what is xn xn will be inverse transformation of yn okay so that is why xm is equal to tm inverse y1 y2 so on yn now what is m by here how many random variables we have considered we have considered n number of random variables so m value is also varying from 1 to n okay now here we have considered the sample space there is one to one mapping between x and y means for every value of x there is a corresponding value for y there is a one to one mapping between x and y okay now what is that we have taken here we have taken it to two closed regions in x and y okay rx is the closed region of x r y will be the closed region of y okay since now there is a one to one mapping between x and y so rx will be mapped into r y since what type of transformation we have taken so the sample space is having one to one mapping between x and y so whatever region closed region we are taking in x is mapped to the closed region in y okay rx is mapped to r y now since these two are mapped so you know that how do you find out the area of this closed region so if you do the, the if you integrate the joint log density function of x in this region that gives you the area similarly if you integrate the joint log density function of y in this region you get the area of r y okay so that is integral with respect to r x we are doing integration in the region closed region r x okay since it is x you know you have to consider all x variables how many x variables we have n number of x variables so x1 x2 so on xn or x1 x2 so on xn dx1 dx2 so on dxn so this gives you the area of rx it is equal to integral in the region ry so how many integrals we have since we have n number of random variables we will be having n integrations here okay now what is the region ry what are the variables we will be having y1 okay you have y1 y2 so on y n y1 y2 so on y n d y1 d y2 so on d y n okay so so that the region rx is mapped to the region r y okay how we are obtaining y the y we are obtained by applying transformation so we are applying transformation to obtain y okay so the left side of this equation will be same there is no change in the left side of the equation on the right side how do you obtain y1 y2 y3 so on okay that can be obtained by applying transformation so 
what is y1 here y1 will be x1 that is equal to transformation t1 inverse y2 is x2 t2 inverse yn x and uh, yn is x and tn inverse and there are j what is j here we have discussed that what is this transformation tn just see here tn is having continuous partial derivatives so the matrix of continuous partial derivative what is this size n cross n no so here you see how many uh, uh, how many random variables we have the input side we have n number of random variables on output side we have capital n number of random variables okay so that is why what is that here the transformation tn is having continuous partial derivatives that is why to transform y to x what is that we have to take we have to take the matrix of this continuous partial derivative the what is this determinant of this matrix j so this j matrix is called jacobian matrix it is called jacobian matrix we have to take mod j what is mod j this is the determinant of the matrix j what is the size of this matrix the size of this matrix is n cross n okay so this here this transformation is continuous partial derivative that will be denoted by this matrix j here okay d by 1 d by 2 so on d by n okay now what is this matrix j the matrix j is nothing but the jacobian matrix j is for jacobian matrix okay what is mod j mod j is the magnitude of jacobian matrix this magnitude of jacobian matrix so what is j here j will be denoted like this so it is given as it is what is that it will have it will be having continuous partial derivatives so it is given as dot t1 inverse by dot y1 dot t2 inverse sorry t1 inverse dot y2 so on dot t t1 inverse dot y2 similarly dot t2 inverse dot y2 dot t2 inverse dot y2 sorry y1 y2 so on do t2 inverse do y2 n this will continue so what will be having here do tn inverse do y1 do tn inverse do y2 so on do tn inverse do y this is called jacobian matrix okay so this will give you the magnitude of jacobian matrix j okay now if you observe these two equations take these two equations if you observe these two equations uh, compare these two equations if you compare the left side of the equation is same but there is no change in the left side of the equation only the right sides the right sides of the equation will be equal okay so we just equate the right side of both these equations take this equation as 2 and 3 equate right sides of these two equations if we equate the right sides of these two equations what will be getting integral r y okay f y1 y2 so on y n y1 y2 so on y n okay d y n d y1 d y2 so on d by n is equal to what it is equal to the side so integral we are under the closed region r by f x1 x2 so on x n okay whereas x1 is equal to t1 transpose so on x n is equal to t n transpose okay into mod j mod j d y1 d y2 so on d y n okay so if you just remove the integration parts if you remove the integration 
what will be getting here? Will be getting what is the relation between the probability density function of random variable y with respect to x? So, what is the relation between the probability density function here? See here, f y1, y2, yn. How do you get y1, y2, yn? By transformation of x1, x2, so on, xn. No? Okay, so x1 is equal to t1 inverse. Okay x2 is equal to t2 inverse so on xn is equal to tn inverse into mod j so this gives you what is the relation between the transformed random variable and the input random variable whereas y is the transformed random variable whereas x is the input random variable so here we have discussed the transformation of n random variables yes or no now we will discuss the transformation of only one random variable. If you take n is equal to 1, if you take n is equal to 1, we will be getting only one random variable. Transformation of one random variable. Okay. So in this case, what is that we are doing taking? X is a input random variable. It is transformed to the random variable y. Y is the Transform, transform the random variable. Okay. So, how do you write y? y is equal to t of x. y is equal to t of x. Now, what is x? How do you find out x? x can be obtained by applying inverse transformation. x is equal to t inverse of y. Okay. So, from this equation, now can you tell me what is f y of y? f y of y will be equal to fx of x is equal to t inverse s or no? Just observe this equation. We have only one random variable. f y of y is equal to what? fx of x is equal to what? t inverse and j. What is j? So here we will be having j dou t inverse by dou y. Do t inverse by do y. What is j? Do t inverse by do y. Okay. Now what is a do t inverse by do y? So what is t inverse? T inverse gives you what? X no? T inverse gives us x. So the probability density function of y. How do you write? F y of y is equal to f x of x. Okay. What is t inverse gives us? Y no x no t inverse gives us x. So here we have do x by do y. Okay, this is for single random variable. Transformation for single random variable. Now if you take for two random variables, the transformation of two random variables, what is that we have? The two random variables x1, x2. We have two random variables x1, x1 and x2. Are transformed to what? Y1, comma Y2. It is transformed to the random variable Y1 and Y2. Here, what is n? How many random variables we have taken? n is equal to 2. In that case, what is probability density function? Can you tell me what is that? Here, how many random variables will be having? Two random variables Y1, comma Y2. These are the two random variables Y1, comma Y2. Is equal to, can you tell me what is the formula? fx1, x2. Okay. fx1, x2. x1, x2. Can you tell me what is the Jacobian matrix here? The Jacobian matrix is do t inverse. We have two transformations now. Do t1 inverse by 1. Do t 1 inverse y2, okay, dou t2 inverse y1, dou t2 inverse y2. This is your Jacobian matrix, okay. So that is why this can be written as what is that? F x1, y1, y2, y1, comma y2 can be written as how we will write it as F x1, x2 x1 comma x2 what is t in t1 inverse t1 
Transformation of x. 